Create Pro 6 Tutorial, Host Client Connection. The first step is to open Create Pro on the host computer. The host computer is the computer that has the three Create Pro files on it. It should be a desktop or a computer that will not be moved to different networks or outside of your network. It will be running FileMaker Pro and the Create Pro files will be installed on that same computer. When you open, you'll go to File, Sharing, Share with FileMaker Clients, make sure it is turned on. You will then see the three Crate Pro files that are currently open and running. Make note of this IP address that's right here because you may need to type that number in when you start connecting your clients. That number is only valid when the client is on the same local network. If you are connecting from outside of your local network or outside of your office, it will be a different set of numbers. So these are the host IP address for in your network and say OK. Now, so that we can avoid problems, you will go to Preferences, Licensing, Devices. The first computer is the host. Every other computer that you have connected are called client computers. If there is a client listed here, it means that it did connect to Crate Pro and still should be able to connect to Crate Pro as long as it's on the local network. There should be no problems connecting for any of these computers that are on your local network unless you changed the network. That is something completely different, and if your network changed, then you need to speak to your IT person to find out what did they do. An easy way to fix it is to take all of the computers, not the first one, but any of the client computers listed below the host, click on the X, and then choose to delete that computer. You will delete the entire record that simply removes the client from the Crate Pro network so that we can go back and add it in. That will be your step one on the host computer. Step two is to go to a client computer. You have four licenses for client computers and one license for a host computer. If you have attempted to connect on the client computers previously, you will see many icons when you open FileMaker Pro Launch Center. FileMaker Pro must be installed on each client to be able to connect to Crate Pro on the host. However, you should, if you have connected previously, have a single computer file on your client and not more than one. If you have more than one icon, it means you may have connected to backup files, the wrong computers, or just your downloaded file and we want to clear that. On the client computer, each client computer, you will go to File, Open Recent, Clear Recent Files to clear all of the shortcuts that you have created to the host. Now we are going to connect to the host which is currently open and running on the host computer. When you connect to Crate Pro that is running on a different computer on the host tab when you first open it normally you will not see any host computers listed here. 
However, if this client has previously connected to Crate Pro on a host, you may see the host listed. The first thing that you would want to see is in this list, do you see the host computer that you have open with Crate Pro running right now? I named the host computer CP Host. When I click on this, Crate Pro will either locate immediately the Crate Pro file that's open on the host computer or it will search for it on your local network. When you find that computer, you will click, you will see this file name here, click on the star to the left to make that a favorite file. There should be only one favorite. So if you have anything else that you have clicked on the star, it's important to uncheck it and only the host computer that is actively running Crate Pro right now should have a star to make it a favorite. Your employees should only select the host computer that is your production computer and none of the other files. Unfortunately, at this time, we can't clear out other host data. On FileMaker 16, this is why it's important to mark the star on the left side of the host computer that you are using. If when you click on the host tab, you do not see your host computer, you will click on the plus to add the new host. The internet address you will add right here exactly as you saw it in the first part of this in step one when you did file sharing, share with FileMaker clients and I asked you to take a note of the IP address of the host. You will enter it here and then if you would like to, this is optional, name it host computer for Crate Pro or anything that you would like that you will remember. Once you click on save, then you will see the list of the Crate Pro files and they will show up just like this with the name you created here and it will then show you the file. When you activate a client for the first time, you will need to use your CP6 activation file which has your name on it. You will need to copy paste the entire stack of data. And then you will enter it here. Depending on your operating system, there is the possibility it will not accept the file because the activation key is expired. If when you activate this and you select to activate, it says this is expired, you need a current one, there is a cost to get a current activation file which will be valid for 30 days for you because of your location. But there is a fee, so you will want to go ahead and connect your four clients within those 30 days if you need a new activation. But before we do that, you will want to attempt to use your most current activation file on each client. Remember to copy paste the entire block of data and not just the key. Click on activate. It will confirm if it worked or not. You will say OK and then you are able to click on login and you will enter the login information of any user that already has an account inside of Crate Pro.
click on Open, you will get this screen. You will log in and you will enter the name of the user and their password that they have created. If you don't know how to enter new users into your Crate Pro, there is a user article on the Crate Pro support portal or Ask Joseph. And then once you've entered the user, you will click on Log In and it will open Crate Pro. You may need to drag it to see it a little closer on the screen. This Crate Pro is actually running on the host computer and now it is running on client number one. You will do the exact same steps for each client. Each client will install FileMaker Pro and then you will open FileMaker Pro, then you will click on the host tab and either select the host, which you should see right away, or you will add the host computer. When the client is done at the end of the day, they should always click on the log out keys here and choose to quit FileMaker. This allows it to close. So when your clients, it's another day, they're coming into work, they want to connect, the person on the host must open Crate Pro and log in on the host computer. And then on the client, they've got their FileMaker Pro icon. They will double click on it to open it or click once, whichever it is. You will see your host computer and then you will see the Crate Pro file. So you've got the host and the client. We are on the host tab. It's now automatic. They don't have to go at it. They don't have to look for it. As long as Crate Pro is open, that link will be right here. They can click on that link and they can choose open and then Crate Pro will open. They will log in, enter their name, their username that you have entered and the password that they created and they will log in. Now that you've completed step two, which is to add each client to the host computer, you can go to the preferences module on the host or on any client because they are all sharing the exact same database click on the licensing tab devices and you will then see each client that you have connected the first line item is always the host computer the second third fourth based on the number of client licenses you have purchased will show up below that if a particular client is connected currently to the host this circle here will be filled in. Always remember, if you ever need to change a client license for a different computer or a new computer, you have five total line items. That's how many you are licensed for. You can always remove the one that is not going to be used. That way you can install FileMaker Pro on the new client and have it take the place of this one by following step two. We are now going to cover a little bit of information about connecting to the host computer from outside of your local network such as if you are using a laptop you want to connect using the local host when you are inside the local network but when you're home or at a customer site you may want to connect to Crate Pro from the customer site or a different location you are now on a different network which means the IP address 
is going to be different for that customer's network or your home network and you have to actually leave the network that you are connected to pass through the internet to your business network where the host is and connect to the computer in that network. This is done using routers and the router information is the gateway or the front door to allow other computers to connect to computers on your chosen network. When you start CratePro to connect to your host computer which is on a different network you will go to the host tab as you normally would and you will click on plus the host internet address in this case is not the local address that you got the first time because that local address is actually when you are in your local network it is not what's called a public or external IP address. From here, you will have to get your router information that's located on your router in the office that the host computer is at. This is typically done by someone who is knowledgeable about networks or an IT person. That information, that host, router, or external IP address needs to be entered here. You, when you click on save, it will go and search for that router as long as it's set up. There are hundreds of different brands of routers and we can't provide the information specific to your router. So you will have to get someone who is experienced at working with networks, or if you have an IT person, they will probably need to help you. When you open the router, this screen, for example, is on a particular type of router. You are looking for the public IPv4 address. That is the router's external or public IP. So when you open CratePro and click on the plus to add a new host computer, this is the address that you will need to enter. After you've done that, as long as the router ports are open, you will probably be able to connect through the router to the host computer that is running CratePro. However, in some cases that is not going to exactly work as you had hoped and you may have to take the additional step in the router of doing what is called port forwarding. What that is, is that when FileMaker Pro on your client, which is outside your local network, connects to the router, inside the router is a setting that says, hey, take this client and send it off to the specific computer that is the host computer. This is called port forwarding. In port forwarding, and every router is very different. Do not look at this image and assume that your router will look at all the same. This is not something that we can help you with because it is outside of the Crate Pro and FileMaker support. So this router issue is something that you will have to set up if you want to connect from outside of your local network. Once the port forwarding is set up, your clients should easily be able to connect. If for any reason your client computers still are not connecting to that host computer when they are outside the local network, your IT person is going to want to look at that router and make sure port 5003 and 5353 are not closed. These ports are owned by FileMaker and typically 
they are not closed, which means they allow the data to pass through. However, some companies will go in and close all the ports just for security. Again, this is a router specific setting, so we can't tell you where you need to go in your router to make sure that happens. But once and only if that is an issue, do you need to do that?